In this video, Entitled Karen pushes me out of electric cart. My father abused and kicked me out of my home, so I took everything. And parents leave me 14-year-old female with a very sick baby and refuse to return until they've had enough fun. Entitled Karen pushes me out of electric cart. So this just happened at my local grocery store and I'm still fuming over it. For reference, I have a hereditary connective tissue disorder, HEDS, that makes my tendons, ligaments, skin, some veins, and other connective tissue very loose and stretchy. This causes chronic pain, frequent dislocations, hyperextensions, and generally loose joints. I also have a degenerative disc disease and a comorbid form of POTS that makes my heart race every time I'm standing and can eventually cause me to pass out if I'm standing for too long. I can walk, but I have to use a cane when I do because I can't walk very well or for very long. My knees don't like to support my body weight and I can very easily dislocate a knee or a hip if I step ever so slightly wrong or happen to trip over anything. Because of this, I tend to use my wheelchair for longer outings. Thankfully, my local grocery store has those electric carts that customers can ride around on in the store so I don't have to go to the trouble of hauling my wheelchair out of the car and can just use one of those. So I'm in the store doing some grocery shopping, minding my own business, I wasn't even really paying attention to the people around me because I just wanted to get what I needed and get out. One of the items I needed happened to be on the top shelf, so I got up out of my electric chair to get it off the shelf. The next thing I know, this fucking Karen flips her shit because those carts are for people who need them, not kids who just want to take them for a joyride. I should add here that if you didn't know me or you've never seen me attempt to walk, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with me. Other than the way I walk, I look perfectly healthy to the casual observer. Now, I get this kind of thing all the time when I'm using one of the store's electric carts, so I just rolled my eyes and told her that I do need it and started to move along to get the rest of my shopping done. Surprise, surprise. That wasn't the end of it. The next thing I know, she's shoving me and pushing me so hard I fell out of the cart. Now I'm just sitting there on the the floor stunned while this woman yells obscenities at me in between generally incoherent ramblings about dumbass college kids. Thankfully at this point my boyfriend came back from grabbing milk. He rounded the corner into the aisle and saw what was going on and from the look on his face I'm surprised he didn't deck this bitch. The following argument went something like this. Boyfriend, excuse me? What the fuck do you think you're doing? Karen, this little brat thinks it's okay to steal cars from disabled folks. Boyfriend, he is disabled, you fucking twat. Karen, I saw him get up to reach for something. He's obviously faking it. Boyfriend, you thick motherfucker. You think just because he can stand means he doesn't need a cart? And you think that gives you the right to assault him? What is wrong with you? Boyfriend then proceeds to ask me if I want him to call the cops. Lady starts freaking out over the possibility of actual real live assault charges. And I guess the commotion was enough that at that point, one of the store's managers decided to get involved. He sees me still on the floor, asks what's going on, and when my boyfriend explained what had happened, also asked me if I wanted to call the authorities. At this point, I had had enough, was pretty shaken up and on the verge of crying, which I don't like to do in public, and just wanted to go home. At the end of all this, the store manager comped my groceries, banned Karen from the store, and told me he would make sure that all the other stores from the chain that were in the area did too. I've had people give me the side eye or go so far as to chide me for using the store's electric carts before, but I have never had anyone put their hands on me until now. It makes me so mad because this woman literally just saw me stand up to reach something and apparently that was reason enough for her to feel the need to physically remove me from the mobility aid I was using. Now, like I said, to the casual observer, I don't look disabled. Unless you saw me walking or saw me dislocate something, you probably wouldn't know there was anything wrong with me. It just makes me so angry because people ought to know that invisible illnesses exist and that not all disabilities can be outwardly seen. Also, just because someone can stand up doesn't mean they don't need a wheelchair. It's not like only people who are paralyzed have the right to use one. And even if I was just a dumbass college kid taking an electric cart for a spin, that still doesn't give someone the right to push me out of it. If you think I shouldn't be using it, go get a manager or something. Or better yet, mind your own damn business and finish your own damn shopping. I shouldn't have to explain my disability to everyone who sees me using a mobility aid. That happens a lot, even when I'm just using my 
my cane. Random strangers will ask me what happened or how I hurt myself. My go-to answer slash shutdown for that now is I was born and I especially shouldn't have to fear for my physical safety every time I need to go grocery shopping. My father abused and kicked me out of my home, so I took everything. I'm not going to drag this out too long, but to get right to the point, my father is very religious to the point where we couldn't do a lot of things that would be considered normal. Christmas, dating, etc. I didn't hate my dad by any means. He taught me a lot. However, he was very abusive. As a black man, he seemed to think the only way to discipline a child was to knock that sense into them. He would constantly get angry at minor things and punch my brother in the soft part of his stomach. I suppose we both just normalized that abuse, and as I got older, I learned to not take the punches and actually block. The first time I did it shocked my dad. It was so satisfying not to cry when my dad hit me and just look at him with this blank expression. Doing this definitely made him more angry as he would try to make me cry. I feel like it gave him some sick satisfaction. You'd think all of this would make me hate him? Nope. My idiotic self just didn't seem to register how bad this was. I tried to justify it as him teaching me a lesson, but eventually the last straw would come. So I was 16 at the time and my father gave me the ultimatum. Continue school or get a job and pay a majority of the bills. He wasn't working at the time and I hated school. While my grades were average to high, I just didn't want to be part of that environment anymore. Our overall bill was about 1300 pounds and I'd have to give 600 pounds of my paycheck with my brother paying the other half. I decided to just go with it and look for a job. Now a week into my job search, my father started shouting at me, saying I was taking way too long. Keep in mind, when my brother left school, he gave him over two months to find something. He ended up putting me in front of a computer and made me apply to things all day and night. I ended up going to bed at 6 a.m. the next morning. I got so desperate, I applied for McDonald's and within a day got the job. Unfortunately, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. A lot of inappropriate touching and horrible acquaintances. Anyway, a year into working, a new girl joined the team and as cliche as it sounds, I fell for her instantly. I went out of my comfort zone and just decided to flirt with her. Within that day, we were dating. It was amazing. Obviously, I couldn't tell my dad about this, so we hit it for another year as we dated. Within that time, we ended up having sex. Sex before marriage would be a big no-no. My father later found out. Now, this part is pretty invasive, but he had connected to my WhatsApp messages and was reading them on his laptop while I slept. I believe he actually opened my phone while I slept, using my thumb recognition. I was chewed out the next morning and told to break up with her, which I didn't because she was a whore and didn't really love me. He then told me to get out of the house and never come back. I will give some context for this. My dad likes to use this line when we're in trouble. He'll make us go outside our flat and then a minute later call us back inside. He had never really gotten to that point with me, but my brother experienced it all the time. I'd always told him that if our father ever did that to me, I'd just leave. So as you can imagine, I left. I walked for hours while my dad was blowing up my phone to come home. If you thought this was because he cared and wanted me to be safe, you'd be wrong. He would later send texts telling me not to tell anyone what was happening. It's none of their business and I'm not ruining his reputation. I wasn't planning on telling people anyway, but the fact he said that shows he only cares for others' opinions. Because I had left so quickly, I hadn't had time to grab anything. I had a phone and the clothes on my back. I had to call my girlfriend for moral support, and after talking, she straight away booked a hotel. I was so thankful. Lucky for me, I was getting paid the next day, so I'd be able to get my money and hopefully rent a place. To this day, I haven't spoken to my father and I completely blocked him, and while I struggled to pay my rent every month, it's still way better than my situation prior. The story does have a happy ending. Remember how I wasn't able to get my stuff? Well, my father had gone on holiday. One of my friends tipped me to this. So, my girlfriend and I went back to the house and broke in using a credit card. My dad never locked his door, so if you just swiped the card through the door with enough pressure, you could eventually make it turn and get in. I was actually struggling to do this. The neighbor came by and actually did it for me. He was such a good guy. I know he just assumed we were locked out, but he really saved my life more than he knows. I took everything I wanted, including stuff like the TV, since it was my money that paid for all of that. I can only imagine how shocked my dad was when he came home and found all my stuff gone. He was probably going to sell it to cover the rent. 
parents leave me, 14-year-old female with a very sick baby and refuse to return until they've had enough fun. When I was 14, 20 years ago, I had been babysitting around my small town for two years. I had a great reputation with my regulars and would routinely stay until the early hours of the morning when the parents needed a night out. I would normally charge $15 an hour, but that would jump up to $20 after midnight. There was a wedding to be held in my town, which meant people would be traveling to attend and I was recommended to babysit by a trusted family friend. I had never met these parents before. Bit of backstory. At the time, there was a big outbreak of men Ningakol. There had been cases of it from where these parents were traveling from, and as a kid who was interested in stuff like this, I had read up all about it and knew the symptoms. The night of the wedding comes and I arrive at the hotel to meet the parents. The baby is one, and I thought it would be an easy night because I normally have three or four kids to look after. It was a really hot summer night, and the baby was just in a nappy. The mother mentioned he was teething and might be a little whiny, but nothing I couldn't handle. About an hour after they had left, around 2 p.m., the baby woke up and was screaming. He was hot, I mean so hot to the touch that I pulled my hands back when I went to pick him up. I tried to calm him and cool him but to no avail. Any food or drink I tried to give him he vomited straight up and he was constantly soiling his nappy with a steady stream of diarrhea. At 4 p.m., when I knew the ceremony was over, I called the mother to tell her about her sick child. This wasn't just teething. His temperature was soaring and she didn't even leave any ibuprofen or anything to help with that. She sighed into the phone and told me she'd be there in 20 minutes. Where the reception was, it was a two-minute walk back to the hotel. After waiting two hours and the baby not getting any better, I rang again and was ignored three times. By this stage, it had cooled down outside so I took the baby for a little walk along the veranda to try and distract him. However, I had locked myself out when I went to go back in. The baby vomited again and did a massive shart at the same time that dripped out from the nappy. So at this stage, I was covered in vomit and shit, locked out, no phone, and with a screaming baby. I had to walk through reception at the hotel, which happened to be attached to the restaurant, so those dining got a good eyeful and smell to go with their dinner. The lady at the front desk let me back in the room and I tried to ring again. The mother finally answered and I said your baby is terribly sick. He's hot, vomiting and seemed like he had a rash starting to develop, which is a giveaway for meningocal. She sighed again. They had just started dinner and would be straight back after that, and please don't try to call again. Another two hours later, around 9.30, I rang my mother and she came to help out and bring me a change of clothes. We finally got the baby down about 11 and I rang one last time. Said that I had my mother with me and I would be leaving at 12 after I called an ambulance for their obviously seriously sick child. The mother ended up coming at 11.45, drunk as hell and very upset that I had ruined her night. She couldn't enjoy herself because she kept worrying that I was gonna call. She cussed me out about the smell in the room and how many nappies and bottles I had gone through. My mom stood back and let me handle it, but spoke up and said if I could get paid now because we needed to get home. The mother handed me an envelope and shut the door in my face. $20. That was all in the envelope. I was owed $150. Mom knew we wouldn't get her to answer the door again, so she took me home. The next morning, mom woke me up with the extra $130. She had gone to the hotel at 7 a.m. and once she told the manager what had happened, the manager slipped a note under the hotel door saying that due to the extra cleaning and disinfecting that would need to be done to the room, there was to be an extra charge of $200 put on the room, plus the extra $130 that our in-house sitter was owed. When everyone looks after each other in a small town, it's a nice feeling. Apparently, that father blew up when the extra charges were put on his car card. Didn't realize the baby was so sick and was swearing at his hungover wife. The mother was screaming about the unsatisfactory babysitting I had did and they left in a huff. I think about that poor baby every now and again, hoping that he was alright and got over whatever was making him sick. I was in a small panic for about a week, waiting to get sick too, but thankfully, and by some miracle, I didn't.